Hello, friends and total strangers. I'm John Hudson. You might know me as the guy from that show or the guy from that other show. Tonight, I'm here to introduce a veritable titan of the airwaves, a deity of the dial, and a man of unlimited hyphenates, programming pioneer, advertising innovator, renowned writer, acclaimed artist, radio icon, and Hall of Fame inductee, Shadow Stevens. Born with golden vocal cords, Shadow came out of the womb with the voice of a grown-ass man that sounded like three fingers of liquid sex poured into a velvet tumbler and garnished with gravitas. As a child, Shadow sounded so seductive. The first time he said his ABCs, his kindergarten teacher left her husband. But you knew Shadow had one of the most iconic voices on the planet. So let me tell you a few things you might not know. Did you know that Shadow was the world's youngest disc jockey at age 11 in Jamestown, North Dakota? That he was the first DJ in America to play David Bowie and Queen? That he literally invented alternative rock programming when he launched the world-famous K-Rock in Los Angeles? Or that in 1988, when he took over American Top 40, the audience grew to one billion listeners a week? To put that in perspective, in 1988, one-fifth of all the people on the planet tuned in to hear Shadow every week. Did you know that he's won a Clio Award, a Billboard Magazine Award, or that he produced commercial campaigns for iconic movies like The Blues Brothers, 48 Hours, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High? That he created, wrote, produced, edited, and did all of the artwork for the groundbreaking audio theater comedy series Mental Radio, currently being developed as an immersive live theater stage show. That he has two gorgeous grandchildren, three incredible kids, and a wife so fine even Stevie Wonder knew she was hot. Well, here's something you might not be lucky enough to know. Despite all that talent, all that incredible achievement, and decade after decade of success in this industry, Shadow is a loving, generous, kind-hearted man who makes all the lives he touches better and the world around us a brighter place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce Mr. Shadow Stevens. God, I love John Henson. He's so funny. He's such a wordsmith and brilliant. Um, kind of apprehensive um, about these kinds of things. And I've been, you know, tormented by the weight of um, the dread of humiliation among so many accomplished people. Uh, but I came across this study done by Stanford University that revealed that after the first five minutes, 80% of the audience understood 40% of what you're saying. Five minutes later, 30% of the audience remembered 7% of what you're saying. And 90% were actively engaged in sexual fantasies. <laughs> Can't make that up. I see that a lot of you are smiling, and that puts me at ease. Um, I've been a radio junkie my whole life, and uh, to be among, I mean, come on. Who doesn't know John DeBella? I mean, 40 years in radio and still smiling, and still. Jerry House, funny as hell, survived brain aneurysm, kept going. Uh, Deborah Peretti, iconic. Of course she's here. 
And Bob Rivers, uh, God, I love those parodies, are just genius. Still, still amazing. Pat St. John knows more about rock than anybody, all of us in this room combined, and he's still going, and he worked at CKLW, for those of you who know what that means. Um, Charles Warfield, come on. When his name is whispered, heads turn. You mean Major Market Broadcast Management Warfield? I know. <laughs> of course. And Nita Totenberg, my, uh, my partner with uh, Rhythm Radio that I did for seven years, was an international corporate attorney from South Africa. And he said, when I came to NPR, it was NPR. When I came to America, NPR, I was addicted. And Nina Totenberg, she's brilliant. So now my writing partner on Metal Radio, uh, I said that I was inducted into this Radio Hall of Fame. And he goes, man, Nina Totenberg, I, I gave money to NPR and I got a premium that was a Nina Totenberg. <laughs> he says, I love her. She is badass. And of course, I agree. Now, of course they're all in the Hall of Fame. Of course. And I don't know what soul-crushing movements and moments you had in your life, but uh, you stayed with it, and I didn't, and here's my story. It started with my dad's web core tape recorder when I was eight. Record, push, pause, add music, tell story. I built this little radio station when I was 10. I could broadcast all over Northern Jamestown. <laughs> they hired me on a real station as the world's youngest disc jockey when I was 11. When I was 24, I went to Los Angeles and to KRLA, and uh, they made me program director. I didn't ask. They made me program director because I said we should be playing album music. It was kind of revolutionary at the time. And uh, I just hired my idols, B. Mitchell Reed and brother John Radgren, and uh, called it Rock with a Grin and wrote and produced 50 jingles and hired these unknown talents, um, Captain and Tennille and Kenny Loggins and a 30-piece Mormon Tabernacle choir to sing our j iconic jingles. We had hilarious contests and we uh, catapulted to number one. And I quit because now management, unlike Charles Warfield, had a better idea and they were going to make me do things that I knew would fail and I knew I'd be, you know, blamed. So then I launched K-Rock, and this is all cutting edge rock all the time. It was also a really big deal at the time. And uh, we were the first station in America to play Queen. We launched the station with Queen, and it took over Southern California, but, well, we weren't being paid. <laughs> and everyone was going bankrupt. So I quit. And that day, the whole staff quit, and they went off the air for two years. So then I go to KMET, and it became number one station in Los Angeles. And that's the year I won the, the Billboard Personality of the Year Award. And, um, and I quit, because management... <laughs> they told me they had these people that had to go. Three brilliant people had to be terminated, because... They just weren't working out. So I left radio and I was heartbroken and it was everything I loved. Radio created the foundation of everything I've done with my life. All of my tools and my disciplines all started with people like you. And that's why I'm so amazed that I'm even here because I left and I, <laughs> I went, I went in, into advertising and I worked, you know, 18 hours a day, seven days a week for five years and finally I had some success, and I did the Blues Brothers movie and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and uh, success was fueled by prescription drugs. <laughs> and I drank more, and then I gained 50 pounds, and then it was cocaine and crystal meth, and then it was carrying guns because people were trying to kill me. I could hear them outside the window whispering. So I used into convulsions for years, you know, with my head slamming on the floor and come to and think I should take a breather. So I had an overdose and my uh, parents uh, intervened and I went into rehab 
and um, cleaned up, took up martial arts and meditation, lost 50 pounds, and miracles started happening. So let me give you a quick rundown with a whole bunch of people you don't know. But first, I'll start with thanking my mother, who taught me to use a phonograph when I was two. And she said, you were immediately obsessed. And my dad, for enthusiasm and that tape recorder that changed the course of the destiny of my life. Uh, Bill Drake, for uh, changing my name to Shadow Stevens, against my will. Uh, Mel Phillips uh, for WRKO. He taught me how to work in the big time. And uh, Rick Rosner who made me Steve Allen's sidekick on national television and years later put me on Hollywood Squares. Um, there was Hal Matthews at KRLA and Gary Bacosta at K-Rock and Monty Gass, my first partner in advertising, and Dave, uh, Robbie Davis, who was my second partner in uh, both still in my life, and Casey Kasem for leaving American Top 40. <laughs> and, uh, and Tom Cuddy for uh, steering me through American Top 40, and Howard Stern for being Howard Stern, and Sean Compton for Antenna TV. And COVID for bringing me back to my love of radio, audio theater. And um, I've done this metal radio project now for three years. And um, John Henson described it as a belly laugh of audio acid and spiritual crack. <laughs> so I've got some history there. Let me tell you one more story. Uh, when I got sober, the first miracle that happened nine months later, I, I, this guy that worked for me met this beautiful model in the bank, and I brought her over, and, and she was in the studio when I came in. And we started dating. We were out on a date, and she's telling me about, you know, going out in the south of France with this billionaire, and uh, hating the way that he was talking to her, and said, pull the limo over. So she gets out of the limo, and she's walking along, and he's trying to coax her back. Now, I'm hearing the story and I'm starting to have a panic attack. I'm thinking, I am from Jamestown, North Dakota. I have nothing in common with this woman. She's from Chicago and she's with a billionaire in the south of France and <laughs> we've got to leave. So we get in the car and I'm hyperventilating in the car. So I say, are you okay? No, I'm, I, I, let's go to my apartment. So we go to her apartment and she says, sit in the middle of the floor. And I sit in the middle of the floor with cross-legged and I'm trying to catch my breath. And she said, she sat across from me and she said, do this. A uh, sailor went to sea, to see what he... And I started to laugh and I went along with it and I laughed my way out of a panic attack. And that woman is right with us tonight. Um, Beverly is regarded as the best person in the world. You can look that up. And if you meet her tonight, she will want to know everything about you. And she will remember it and you will exchange numbers. And that's guaranteed. My daughters, Amber and China. China had the good sense not to go into the business. She's in um, accounting and money management. <laughs> and Amber is an accomplished actor and, and just brilliant at everything. Her husband, Andy, is uh, an amazing actor as well. And uh, their daughters are Ava and Winnie, and they are variations of Beverly. Uh, my son works for Boeing in, uh, in the Missile Project and couldn't be here tonight, but he's also brilliant. I have, my life is so blessed. Um, and then comes Craig, calls me and he says, you've been in, nominated for the Radio Hall of Fame. I went, seriously? I left. I, and I, but I have to tell you, um, at a time like this, Sometimes I see myself in convulsions on the bathroom floor. And I think I almost missed this. Um, if you're going through hard times, don't be afraid to ask for help. Never give up. If you never give up, you just don't know how good life might get. Thank you.